We appreciate you being one with us tonight also. <clears throat> tonight we begin the twenty uh, the thirty first chapter. We'll deal with the first twenty one verses. Jacob is getting ready to leave Haran by the commandment of the Lord. And we read about the circumstances that precede it. And he, that is Jacob, heard the words of Laban's sons, saying, Jacob hath taken away all that our fathers, all that was our fathers, and of that which it was our fathers hath he gotten all the glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. And the Lord said unto, Laban, unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers, and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before. But the God of my father has been with me, and ye know that with all my power I have served your father. And your father had deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. If I said thus, the speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, the ring straight shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straight. Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. And it came to pass at the same time that the cattle conceived, that I lifted up mine eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, I said, Here am I. He said, Lift up now thine eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest to vow unto me. Now rise, get thee out from this land, and return to the land of thy kindred. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him strangers? For he has sold us, and hath quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which God hath taken from our father that is ours, and our children's, and then whatsoever... God said unto thee, Do. Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon camels, and he carried away all his cattle, all his goods which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting, the cattle of his getting which he had gotten, and paid to Anaram, for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went out to shear his sheep. And Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. And Jacob stole away unawares to, to Laban, the Syrian, in that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward Mount Gilead. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob had fled. And he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey, and they overtook him in, Mount, in the Mount Gilead. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night, and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban with his brethren pitched in the Mount of Gilead. Amen. Amen. 
we are being exposed uh, to the nature of man and the nature of God here. Now I want to say a word before we proceed further on the response of Jacob, how sensitive a man he was. How he always responded the right way. He was obedient to his mother Rebecca when she told him, you know, to go in and feign to be Esau, even though he said he didn't want to be known as a deceiver. He was receptive to it. He was obedient to Rebecca when she told him to go to the house of her brother Laban, stay there for, she thought, a few days till uh, Esau settled down. He was obedient to Isaac when he told him to get a wife, go to Laban's house and get a wife from his daughters. He responded with thanksgiving to a vow, with a vow to the revelation of God to him in a dream concerning, regarding his safety. And he obeyed the Lord when he told him to return to the land of our fathers, which is our text. So see, he was consistently responsive. When the will of God surfaced, in whatever form it surfaced, he was, he was receptive to it. So Jacob is re represented as a sensitive man, not as a deceiver. I want to underscore that again because yes, he, people have represented Jacob as a deceiver and a trickster. Uh -huh. But here's the Holy Spirit represents him consistently. I say consistently as a sensitive Amen. person. There was a sense in which Jacob became another man after God appeared to him. That is when he received a personal call. I want to show that this was always the case. When, a personal, when God personally calls someone, their lives changed at that point. We have Noah, he's an example. God called Noah and he was different. From the time he was called, his entire life was built around the will of the Lord. Every part of it. We have Abraham when he was called, Genesis 12. When he was called, every part of his life revolved around the Lord. When Isaac, when he was called, Genesis 26, every part of his life, he didn't live one minute of his life wasn't unto God. Jacob was the same way. When he was called, his life changed and it focused around the Lord. Moses, when he was called, his life changed. He wasn't a shepherd anymore. Joshua, when he was called, his life changed. He became the leader and captain of Israel. When Jesus' disciples were called, they were changed. They all pursued him. When Paul was called, he was instantly changed, and he had wanted to know what God wanted, what Jesus wanted him to do. See, this is a consistent all through Scripture that when people were called, their lives were changed. Amen. Now that's not the way it appears today. But all that means is these people aren't called. That's what that means. Because God gives a record. He calls somebody. You'll not find where they said, no, thank you. Uh -huh. It's just not there. Uh -huh. Where Jesus called it, someone to be an apostle or a disciple, he said, oh, I'd rather not. Yeah. I know there are types that come follow me, but that's, see, that's not the kind of call I'm talking about here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's no different now. God's still calling people. And they're different. When they realize the call, they're different. You say, what about those people that seemed as though they were once responsive? They forgot the call. Mm -hmm. They're not thinking about the call. I mean, you may, you may be gracious toward them and considerate and benevolent toward them, but the bottom line is either they weren't called at all or they forgot the call they had. Yeah. Now, we know this because of what we're called to. Now, it's, it's impossible to be called in the sense we're talking about now. 
whom he foreknew that he also whom he foreknew that he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of the Son, whom he predestinated he them he called. That, that, that was the ones we're talking about. Scriptures tell us we're called to be saints, holy ones. That's what the call's in order to. Abram was called in order to possess the land and bear a seed. Isaac was called to inherit the land and continue the seed. Jacob was called to inherit the land and continue the seed. We're called to be saints. So someone that professes to be a Christian that's not a saint, <laughs> they're not holy. See, they contradict this. And I prefer to believe God is not a liar. Amen. We're called to liberty. Galatians 5.13 is liberty from law and liberty from constraint. Freedom to walk in the will of God. We're called into the fellowship of God's dear Son. We're called to His kingdom and glory. We're called to holiness. We're called to eternal life. This is a call now. We're not going to talk about a call. Now, this is not a philosophical call we're talking about. This is a real call that we're talking about. Amen. We're called to receive the promise of an eternal inheritance. We're called out of darkness into his marvelous light. We're called to suffer for Christ. We're called to inherit a blessing. We're called to inherit glory. See? Now, from the time this call that affects these things, whatever does not affect these things cannot be called a call, the call. Yeah, that's right. yeah. I'm sorry, these people might have something, but they don't have the call. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Amen. Do you think God's going to call someone and these things that he calls you to is not realized? Yeah. Amen. This reflects on the integrity of God. Well, somewhere along the line, the pretension is entered in. <clears throat> the call of God results when you call, He calls you out of the world. When He calls you, it results in a distinction of character. <clears throat> the call itself changes you. You're not the same. It separates you from the course of the world. You're called out of darkness into His marvelous light. So if that doesn't, if that isn't realized, how can you prove you've been called? Right. You know, God calls everyone. Well, there's a sense in which he does. A general call goes out. That's true. But that's not the call that saves you. We're called through the gospel, as especially stated in 2 Thessalonians 2.14, to call you by our gospel. So when the gospel goes out, there's divine influence that accompanies it. The Holy Spirit accompanies it. The grace of God accompanies it. Through the gospel, he calls you. And God, through that good news of Christ, Jesus Christ, who is the embodiment of the gospel, God works through that call, through that message, to call, effectually call the people. But what if that message is not preached? Then God doesn't call. Yeah, that's right. Amen. I'm telling you the truth Amen. now. Amen. Some churches are sitting in the presence of a presence of a silent God. Uh -huh. God isn't doing anything in their assembly. Why not? Because they've neglected the message, the means Amen. through which He works. You table this message. The arm of the Lord just Amen. folds up. Right. It's not going to be toward that whoever Amen. neglects this message. I come from a background where the, me the gospel was a neglected message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If anyone says it wasn't, they just do not know what they're talking about or they're flagrantly dishonest. Yeah. One or the other. Because there was rarely any kind of development of, at all mm -hmm. about what Jesus did yeah. when he died, what, why he yeah. came. And there was very little, if any, development of that. Mm -hmm. Consequently, people's hearts mm -hmm. weren't touched with the call. People weren't inclined. Yeah. That's why. Yes. Amen. Amen. See, people that have had hearts that were hard against Christ like Saul when the call came. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was something else. Yeah, 
given it's an evidence that people don't believe that it's the power of God and the yeah. salvation when they try to manufacture the same effects with other things. That's right. Yeah. See, they... Some people are willing to believe, say it's the power of God in the initial salvation, uh -huh. and when you first are saved. That, but they don't see the issue of sanctification. See, the, the message of the cross mm -hmm. is essential not only for justification, but for sanctification. Amen. If your life's not set apart to God, you can't get in. It's that cut and dried, brethren. If you don't live for God, Jesus isn't living for you. Yes, amen. That's the amen. way it is. Amen. I mention this because these patriarchs live this out. Mm -hmm. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob live this out. Once God communicated with them, once God talked to them, once God called them, that was the end of life as usual. That's right. It just stopped and come to a grinding halt. They even got to get in a different environment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. So this is what's happened to Jacob. Yeah. Jacob, here's, uh, I'll let's get into the text. Mm -hmm. Jacob heard the words of Laban's sons. Now we don't know when this occurred or how this occurred, because Jacob's sons were three days, you know, 45 miles away, mm -hmm. at least. Yeah. How did he hear this? Unless he had really sensitive hearing, you know. How could he hear this? Well, it's my own persuasion that he had taken the, his sheep that had been born to, Jake, to Laban's flock mm -hmm. by a, agreement the speckle, the spotted, and the ring streak belonged to him. So he must have merged, taken the flocks up there and merged them. And when the sun saw this big multitude <laughs> of sheep coming, yeah. they made this charge. Yeah. Yes, but could it, could it also be that periodically or from time to time Laban would send his sons to check on the flock where Jacob was to see yeah, what was could, really happening? It mm -hmm. could have been. The, complication with it is that that would have left the flock of Jacob unattended so I'm not I would have inclined to think Laban would more do it but it's it I can say it doesn't say exactly how it was how it happened so that, that is quite possible yes but concerning the distance see it couldn't be a frequent yeah. thing, thing but it, it might have occurred at this time here it might have occurred he heard the words of Laban's sons now, they made a false claim. They said, he's uh, taken away all it was our father's. He said, well, he wasn't. The, Jacob was keeping Laban's flocks. Mm -hmm. And when he took Laban's flocks, they were, he said they were a multitude. So it wasn't like a little small flock. And the increase of the flock was lambs and goats that were born. I'm sure most of the flock hadn't died out. Mm -hmm. So this was a false uh, charge. Laban himself had separated the flocks originally. There was no indication at the time he separated that anybody was alarmed at how many mm -hmm. spotted, speckled, and ring streaked there were. No one was like shocked that there were so many of these. It appears as though there were very, very few of them, relatively few of them, and the minority. And when he gave them to, the, to his sons, there's no indication that they were alarmed. Boy, this is a large flock. It didn't start out that way, apparently. So in the intervening six years, 14 years for, Rachel, for Leah and Rachel, and, and then he's there 20 years, so six years he'd been keeping the flock. So in six years, this dramatic increase had happened. In six years. And they, when they, however Laban's sons became aware of it, they saw it. It's, this looked like he stole everything. Took everything. Now while uh, Jacob is relating this, he, t he tells, 
it says that he beheld the countenance of Laban. It wasn't the same. So whether they had told Laban or not, we don't know. But Laban had been suspicious about something because he, the countenance of Laban was not the same uh, toward Jacob. Yeah. Now, God has made mankind so their feelings are projected in their countenance. Yeah. You can look at a person's countenance, you can tell when they're cast down, you can tell when they're happy, you know. Why? Why did he do that? I mean, that's the way men are made. That's just how they're created. It's hard to pretend you're happy when you're sad. In fact, I don't know that you can successfully do it. <clears throat> it's because man's made the similitude of God, and God has a countenance. There's a, there's a way which man can be sensitive of how God feels about him. Now some people, they never get close enough to God for this to happen. They live at a practical distance from God. They're always a, uh, at a distance. They can't be sensitive to this. But for those that are sensitive about it, the countenance of God can be detected toward how it is towards you. For instance, Aaron is told to say, The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Well, see, there wasn't some way of recognizing that. Now, in the, under the old law, it was generally by some, by the exchange of external circumstances, increase, food, whatever. Psalm 11, 7 says, The righteous Lord loveth the righteous, loveth righteousness, his countenance doth be wholly upright. So when a person is upright in a world where you where pillars fall down, when they're upright, if they're tender of heart, they'll sense God is, I'm pleasing God in this. This is not like an achievement. This is something that pleases God. David, he exhorted himself when he was cast down. And you, you need to learn to pray this. When you're cast down, don't gripe. Pray this. Amen. Talk to your soul. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for he shall yet, he shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. So even down when you're down in, the, in a pit of suffering, or in the, in the mud of hardship, if you can sense that God is pleased with you, like it doesn't affect you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're able to. Amen. You're able to stand. Yes. Okay, I'll wait. See. The multiplication. No, about the the type of oh. you know, sheep. Laban would not have been upset about a multitude of sheep. That's an increase for him. Mm -hmm. But. Whenever Jacob said, he's changed my wages ten times, yeah, that's right. he says, if, you, if your wages are going to be the speckled, then they bear speckled. Mm -hmm. And if he says, no, they'll be the ring straight. Then they started oh, bearing yeah. the ring straight. Yeah. So he, Jacob could see the Lord in this. Mm -hmm. But the fact that, that Laban's countenance was not toward him... It, it doesn't present Laban in a very favorable light mm -hmm. because Laban was just fine with Jacob taking the loss. Mm -hmm. he, did, he didn't want someone doing to him what he was intentionally doing yeah. to Jacob. Yes, that's right. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend a little bit of time on that from that aspect. But I want to underscore that familiarity with God brings a certain sensitivity of his good pleasure. Amen. Amen. Now, if this is hard to understand, make it your business to understand it. Yes. Make up your mind you're going to understand this. Uh -huh. Go to God with it. Make up your mind you're going to understand this. Mm -hmm. Set yourself to it because this is the truth, what I'm telling you. Yeah. If your heart's tender, you'll know when God is saying, well done, yeah. good and faithful yeah. servant, well done. You'll know when he says, ah, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah. You'll know that too. How else 
else could you um, be able to delight yourself in the <laughs> Lord? Right, yeah. I mean, exactly <laughs> how would you do that if, if this wasn't the case? Amen. But see, His Holy Spirit living in you brings this capacity, yeah. but it has to be refined. That's right. Yeah. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred. Now he'd gone to Mesopotamia, to the area of Haran, to obtain a wife. But God also intended that Jacob obtain a family and some possessions that he could take back to the promised land. So now that this has happened, he's got his wives, got his children, got his flocks. Time to go back. Now previously we read of what several people said to Jacob. So it says, God said unto Jacob. Esau said to Jacob. Genesis 25, 30, when he said, you know, give me that, some of that stew. Isaac said to Jacob when he sent him out. A wife. Laban said to Jacob, but what do your wages be? Rachel said to Jacob, but see, all of that, the God said to Jacob, trumps everything else. We read that the Lord stood above a ladder one time in Jacob's dream, and it was 20 years previously. This would have happened in 19... Uh, 83. Is that right? 1993. This would have happened in 1993. Now, now I ask you, what do you remember from 1993? There, there may be some things, but you, you have to do, kind of do some cogitating on it. So he said this 20 years earlier. The Lord stood above and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again to this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Then for twenty years... He never said that again. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. Now you learn about what faith is. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Faith is living on the basis of what you have acquired some time ago. He had to live. He couldn't let this get away from him. Amen. Satan threw all kind of trials at him to, to erode this promise. Well, that was a long time ago. See, some people can't wait a week yeah. or a day, 20 years ago. And this is the first time, that vision was the first time God said anything to Jacob. And he was 70 years old. That's the first time God said anything to Jacob. <laughs> That's the same age Abraham was, coincidentally, when God first spoke to him. Prior to this, God said, those words, God said, are mentioned 24 times. This is the first time they refer to Jacob. Now, I want to comment briefly here on how infrequently God spoke in those early days. How infrequently God addressed anything to humanity. These years are estimated years, but they're in the they're in the ballpark. We figure that the Earth, if Adam lived around 35, 75 BC. These these are rough estimates. 396 years later, he spoke to Cain. It wasn't good. Uh, but it was 1,419 years till he spoke again. Yeah. That time to Noah. Then it was 645 years, approximately, before he spoke again, and that was to Abraham. 
Well, you got to see here what I'm talking about. This is going to highlight the day of salvation, what a glorious thing it is. Amen. Then after he commenced with Abraham, because he opened things up, there's less frequency. It's about 39 years later, he spoke to Bimelech. About 60 years after that, he spoke to Rachel. 26 years after that, to Isaac. 66 years to Jacob. See, see the difference in the, in the time frames? What was the difference? The difference was the level of ignorance that existed. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you the truth. When I say in an environment of ignorance of the things of God and the purpose of God, God just doesn't say much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. So if we have on our hands a dead church or a carnal church or a worldly church, if you think God's going to talk to a church like that, mm -hmm. it'll be very abbreviated like the wayward ones in Revelation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it will not be for good. Yeah. But where there are people that are living unto God, like Abraham was, I was Jacob, but the, the frequency mm -hmm. picks up. <laughs> it's quite a thing to, uh, a thing to ponder. It wasn't that God didn't want to communicate, didn't want to communicate with fallen man. It was that fallen man in that state, was it, he was not capable of hearing from God. It just, <laughs> there has to be something in there that God's created yes, amen. before God can talk to the person. Yes. Yeah. That's why he didn't call Cornelius till he is pretty familiar about yes. the God of heaven and the things of God that were available to him. Now men... Uh, Men banter about about how fallen man is and how dead is he and does he have a free will and they argue and argue and argue about this. But if it's true that God had a profound desire to reveal his will as he indicates in Galatians 1.16 and that he delights in people knowing him, Jeremiah 9.23, then we must see that the prevalence of sin coupled with spiritual ignorance, keeps God from talking to, yeah, yeah, amen. Talking to men. Amen. Doesn't mean the gospel can't be preached to them. Mm -hmm. I'm saying when God starts yeah. to deal with a person, uh -huh. there has to be something in there That's right. that responds. Amen. With Saul of Tarsus, it was that he was doing it for God. He uh -huh. was wrong in his assessment, yes. but he was, he was conscious of God, right. see. And the land of Canaan, which is critical, would be the center or locus in which the Savior would go about doing good and healing all that were oppressed to the devil. That's the land he's going to do his work in. It'd be the place where the necessity of God's sinnerness would be taught in the temple service. There'd going to be a culture there where you're made conscious of God, God conscious in this land. Which Jacob was going to inherit. See, so he's all laying the groundwork for this. Amen. And God says to Jacob, I'll be with thee. He said, same promise was made to Isaac. Right, Genesis 26, 3. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee. Yes. God told Jacob, Behold, I am with thee. I will not leave thee. Once Abimelech, the captain, uh, and his captain said to Abraham, God is with thee. <laughs> is God with you? Amen. How do you know? There has to be a way you know. Yes, amen. And it's not something you can like, write down, you know. And, but it's important to know it. It's important to know whether God's with you or yes, not. You, you'll not be able to hold up under trial if you, if you have doubts about this. Just the same as Jacob couldn't hold up without hanging on to this. Those in Christ have said, we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. See, See? you can go through very difficult circumstances like Jacob dealing with Laban or Isaac dealing with the herdsmen of Gerar. 
talking about God speaking to people. God's not he, fundamentally. I think people have a have a misunderstanding. God's not trying to save anybody. When, when sometimes he'll he'll he, he he's working in, in one person or he he says something one or one time he spoke and some people said it, they thought it thundered. Yeah. Well, but see that measure wasn't for them. Yeah. God wasn't talking to them. But when God <laughs> yeah. saves somebody, He does it. It's his, He's working <laughs> in them long before they come to Him. He's working in them. He's, he's, he's getting them ready That's to right. hear the call. Circumstances, if you can see them right, circumstances are God maneuvering Amen. things yeah. for His advantage. Yeah. Sarah? Um, I was going to say when you said... Speak up, hon. Oh, okay. I was going to say when you said... Uh, um, if God is with you, He is with the people who believe Him. That's yes, right. That's right. That's exactly Amen. right. Mm -hmm. And it's important that they know it. See that, Sister Sarah? That's what the point we're making. That uh -huh. It's that the people need to know that uh -huh. God is with them. Like Jacob needed, that's why God affirmed this to Jacob. He needed to know this. It wasn't that God's in the background with you, know it or not, He's uh -huh. with you. It's not like that. Yeah. The advantage is in knowing it. Amen. When you know the truth, that it sets you free. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, upon this, Jacob calls Leah, Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock. So he was, <coughs> I gather he was with his flock, not Laban's at this time. Mm -hmm. He called them. He wanted them to know. See, he wanted to get them ready. See, any any time someone God is working with someone, they want everyone else that is in their care or under them. They want them to know that mm -hmm. right. too. Mm -hmm. uh, so he called them. Strongly suggests Jacob had tra probably transported the animals and merged the flocks. I don't know that all of this happened very rapidly, that God said this and then all this happened like instantly, but there's this, these are the next important things that happened. God told her, get, return, get out of this land and return. Mm -hmm. That means shift the flocks. Mm -hmm. That means get the wives and 11 children ready to go back. That means get the mm -hmm. herds that I've got, the wealth I've got, got to be gathered together. But he's not going to do anything without telling uh, Rachel and Leah. For the first time, Rachel and Leah will be leaving their homeland. They're not children now, they're mature women. Mm -hmm. For the first time now, they're going to be leaving their homeland. Yet there's no sign of trauma. Yeah. <laughs> In what would otherwise be rather difficult to do. And he says to them now, you know, you, God, I can tell Laban doesn't, isn't thinking about me the same way he was before, but, but the God of my father has been with me. And you know that with all my power, I remember what kind of man Laban was. You've got to remember what kind of man he was. With all my power, I have served your father. I didn't hold back any of my effort. I was industrious. I did everything I could to serve your father. I was not sloppy in it. I was not drawn, withdrawn in it. Very diligently. See how? How do you serve your master, the one you're working for? How do you serve him? You say, "Well, they're not a very good." Here you got, you got an example of a well, Laban's not very good. Yeah, right. I served him with all my power. Why? Why? Because even Jacob knew if I'm going to rely on God, I can't do my best, do my worst, and expect to receive his best. He seemed to sense that back in these Amen. early times. Really yes. Martin Luther said one time that we should pray as if everything depends on God, and then we should work as if everything depends on us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well said. Mm -hmm. Well said. Mm -hmm. So he's no longer walking in the favor of Laban. He knows that. But he doesn't go home and cry. 
He says, you know, God's been with me. He's been all, God told me. God told him when he, before he got to Laban's house. Mm -hmm. God told him, I'm going to be with you. Now Jacob says, I've seen it. I've seen it now. God's been with me all the way from Haran to Canaan. God's been with him all the way. And he's been with his people, his children. He'll be with them all the way from earth to glory. It may look at times like he's not with you. Like when you get Leah instead of Rachel. And when you have to work seven more years. When you have to make an agreement to get some wages. <laughs> it may look like he is, but God is with me. He saw it. God, he saw it. See, God's been with me. Amen. All the way. He survived all this. Now the God who's kept him all the way, proving his integrity, tells him, return. Now you got to make this journey back. Mm -hmm. I'll be with you in that. I'll be with you in that also. You know, I have started with all my power, or as hard as I could, with all my heart, even though the circumstances weren't conducive to that. Now, lest we forget, we're talking about a period of 20 years. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, I always want to keep that, keep that before you. He kept Jacob in all places where he went. That's what God said, I'll keep you in all places. So he had, he'd done this. He kept him in his tent, and he kept him in his field. Kept him during when he was keeping the sheep in during the day. He kept him when he was keeping them at night. He took very careful care of Laban's flocks. And he carefully increased his own flock according to the agreement with Laban. It took a lot of attention now to, to do all this. And you know that your father deceived me. Changed my wages ten times. Now at this point, this is when Sister June mentioned yeah. that the wages were these spotted, speckled, and ring-streaked animals. As these begin to multiply ten times, now incidentally, they say that it's re reasonably certain that these flocks bred every t every uh, twice a year. So there's a, there's a six year period here, six year period, and twice a year if you lop off the first year because they were conceiving, that's about ten times. So it appears that every time the flocks increased, he changed the standard. Mm -hmm. yeah. this, this time, Jacob, just the spotted. Next time, just the speckled. Next time, just the ring straight. Maybe, uh, maybe the spotted and the speckled, but not the rings. But he changed it ten times. See, so you have no record of that in there. Yeah. But, but Jacob knew it. Mm -hmm. His wife did not contradict what he was saying. That's right. No, they went along with it, as a matter of fact, yes. Now he said, God, however, God suffered him not or didn't allow him, allow him to hurt me. <laughs> he couldn't harm me. He, he, the wicked one touches him not. Yeah. You know, he couldn't, yeah. he couldn't really do anything of harm. With all of his wiles and trickeries and evil intentions, he couldn't, he couldn't really harm Jacob. Actually, became a means by which God accentuated His favor. For That's Jacob. right. That's exactly right. See, and so, and you can look for that in your difficulty. Amen. Some kind of difficulty, you can see this becomes like an occasion for God to multiply grace to you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if it were not for the grace of God, I would have perished. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Remember, God can do this. He kept Laban mm -hmm. from harming Jacob. He kept Abimelech from yeah. defiling Sarah. He said, I withheld thee from sinning against me. I, he stopped, wouldn't let him do it. Yeah. Yeah. And when Jacob was traveling home, it is written, the terror of God 
was upon the cities that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. <laughs> it just, something came over the people of the region as they were traveling back to, and they were they were frightened. They were didn't want anything to do with this. Yeah. Why it was a terror of God That's right. came upon them. It, him changing his wages like this, and then you can see from this statement that um, it, you can each time Jacob would have seen it, it didn't work. Yeah, that's right. He changed it. Now all I'm going to get is these, and the next time I get a lot of those, and so yeah. he changes it because he's trying to to get the upper hand, but he wasn't able to get the you know, upper hand. See, he did. Jacob was not thoughtful at the time because the wages were to be paid at the end <laughs> when the time. You, it wasn't like in, he didn't receive his, he didn't pay the wages. The agreement was not to pay the wages incrementally. It's when the time came. Jacob's reckoning on that. Mm -hmm. Laban's trying to maneuver. The results. When Israel, uh, God commanded Israel three, to keep three feasts a year, all the males had to go to them. Mm -hmm. Left the camp unprotected. He said, Neither shall any man desire thy land when thou goest up to before the to appear before the Lord thrice in the year. No I'll stop people from wanting this land. How yes, yeah. have a lot of us been able to keep what we've got? You ever thought about that? Yeah. How Satan just today tried to inflict damage on our home. And an uh, inebriated woman mm -hmm. severely injured some people that had to be taken to the hospital. And after she collided with them, smashed into our fence. Mm -hmm. Satan didn't intend for the fence to yeah. be damaged. God protected us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you've got cases like this. Yeah. If you look back, you'll see them where God, yeah. God protected you. It's no wonder we're told that we can boldly say. Yes. Yep. That boldly means confidently say, Lord is our helper, I'll not fear what man shall do unto me. So when you're thinking about yourself and your plans and where you're going, all this sort of thing, bring the sovereignty of God into the equation. Amen. Yes, amen. Bring that into the equation. Then he comments on how this breeding all turned out. If he said thus, the speckle shall be thy wages. See, that, that's not what the agreement was. It was a spotted, speckled, and yeah, ring straight. Right. So if he said the speckled, then all, then all the cattle bear speckled. Yeah. <laughs> How's that? So he changed the wages, but he didn't reckon on God. And if he said the ring straight, that's what it is. This, this year is going to be the ring straight. Then they bear, then bear all the cattle ring straight. <laughs> that's God controlling the situation. <laughs> controlling the situation. Man couldn't manipulate this. See, oh, that's a <laughs> that's a blessed thing to consider. God caused everything to work out for yes. Jacob's good. Now, see, we're told he works all things together for yes. their good to them that love God. This is an example of it. Amen. Not something Jacob did, something God did. Amen. God took the cattle from Laban. He said, that's a God hath taken away the cattle of your father. Uh -huh. He took them away. How did he take him away? Not by transporting the flock someplace. He took the reproduction, the increase. He took the increase away. You know, there are in certain uh, occupations of entertainment and sports and this sort of thing, people that have made millions and millions of dollars and they're, they're paupers. Mm -hmm. yeah. What happened? Yeah. God took it away. Yeah. That's what happened. Uh -huh. Boy, people, you're going to come whether they made bad investments or God yes. took it away. Right. Yes. Yep. Took the cattle from Laban. 
Now remember, this record is written hundreds of years after it happened. Moses writes this down hundreds of years after it happened, which means the Holy Spirit, this is how the Holy Spirit wants us to remember this incident. So he inspires Moses to say, God took the cattle away from Laban and gave them to Joseph. He did this by managing the process of conception. And who but God can do that? Amen. He makes the hinds to calve, the psalmist said. <laughs> Over and above desiring for us to know jo Jacob in a correct way, God wants us to understand himself. I control spiritual conception. These children are my, they're begotten of me. Then as the cattle were conceiving or breeding, yes, text that says God is not unrighteous to forget uh -huh. your work of faith and labor, labor of love. love. Mm -hmm. See, in that case, you, they did it toward the brethren, but they did it with a mind to God. And Amen. so God received it as it having been done toward his name because it was done for his people. Amen. And so that's the way it was. He worked. He worked for Laban indeed, but he was working preeminently for the Lord. Amen. And so the Lord gave him the hire. That, that he Amen. Now, Jacob's recounting this. As the breeding was taking place, an angel appears to Jacob <clears throat> in a dream. He said, now lift up your eyes now, look. Have you noticed, Jacob, that only the spotted, speckled, and ring-streaked rams are breeding? Have you noticed that, Jacob? That none of the solid-colored ones, they're not, they're not even, they're not even breeding. <laughs> That's the angel, why Jacob to see that? Yeah. Because remember, this was a multi the flock was called a multitude. So it's, a, it's a big flock. The angel of God said this to him. Now, we've mentioned this before, but there's a, a lot of discussion among professed Christian scholars that the angel of God is really a previous appearance of, of, of Christ in the form of an angel, a Christophany. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refute that, that this cannot be so. Angels are servants. They hearken to the word, voice of the Lord, do his commandments. And they're called ministering spirits, they're, they're servants. Now the question is, whether the Lord Jesus, prior to his incarnation through Mary, was, was ever a servant? That's the question. No, it was he was in the form of God, and he was God. Yeah. It is written that he was with God and was God. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to affirm Jesus was never God's servant mm -hmm. until he put on flesh. Yes, amen. And he's never depicted as God's servant yeah, that's right. or carrying out some particular edict or mandate. So no, this was not Jesus appearing in a servile form prior to coming to the earth. This was an angel, special angel, no doubt was a special angel, but it was not Christ Jesus. Now, of course, there's a division in Bible scholars about this, but that doesn't make any difference. They've got to answer this question. That's right. Amen. Whether Jesus is ever depicted as being a servant before he took on himself the form of a servant, and an angel is the form of a servant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the angel draws Jacob's attention to what he's witnessed in his dream. See these? It looked like just a lot of acti a lot of flock activity, but ah, look a little closer. Something's going on here that I want you to see. See, 
it looked like just a lot of hustle and bustle in the flock. But look carefully. Only the kind of animals that belong to you are breeding. <laughs> is it? So God has orchestrated these events so the total increase is going to go to Jacob. How's that? Now the experience of those in Christ is, is similar. When the Lord draws attention, your attention, gets your attention, you'll see that whatever you've got, you got from God. If it came through us, met one of his servants, he sent the servant. Mm -hmm. Whatever came from God. Then uh, God speaks. God is speaking to Jacob in this dream. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why you don't labor preeminently for men. That's right. Because if you happen to be under an unjust man and you're all embroiled in this... Your witness is going to go downhill. You're That's not, right. You're, you're, yeah. you're going to end up not serving right. That's, That's right. right. Not only your witness, you will go downhill. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that is not a perception of faith. That's not a reaction of faith. God says, I'm the God of Bethel. Remember that? Yeah. 20 years ago, Jacob? I'm the God where you anointed the pillar. Remember that, Jacob? Does God notice what you do or not? God didn't tell him to anoint a pillar. That's right. He did that in response to what God promised him. Mm -hmm. You anointed a pillar and where you made a vow to me. Remember that? Remember that? Remember that, Jacob? I'm the God talking to you. Amen. Have you ever made a vow to God? Did you ever say, well, Lord, if you just do this, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. I will. If you just help me out here, then I'll... God doesn't forget your vows. That's right. You'll say, remember that vow? I remember. I remember that vow. Now, leave this land at once. Go back to your native land. That's the uh, read of the NIV. Twenty years have passed. God's been with him, giving him bread to eat and raiment to put on, as he's promised. Now he says, get back to your land. Doesn't tell him how. Not going to be as easy as coming. He came by himself. Maybe a beast that carried him, but he, he didn't come in with a lot of possessions. He's going out with a lot. So it's going to be a lot more involved in going back than in coming. Return to the land. Land of Canaan. You don't belong here in Heron. I just left here so you could accumulate some goods so you could possess your territory, provide for your family. And so Rachel and Leah, they're listening to all this. So they respond. They've been noticing more than people thought all along. Rachel and Leah said, well, <laughs> is there any inheritance for us in our father's house? Like, what's left? There's no reason for us to stay. He took our inheritance and he gave it to somebody else. Well, it suggests that the spotted, speckled, and ring streak were probably reserved for them. How else could he take their, how could he take away what belonged to them, see? And beside that, we're kind of strangers. Look how he's treated us. He, he sold us. He treated us like the same way he treated Bill Hahn Zilpa. He treated us like we were slaves. He didn't consider we were daughters. So we don't want to stay here anymore. We, we don't want to stay under those circumstances. Oh, would God, a lot of God's people said something like this. Like, look, we've been robbed. They've taken away from us. They treat us like we're slaves. We don't want to be here anymore. Yeah, that's what they said. Ordinarily, daughters were given a dowry. It's outlined in Exodus 22, 17. That is, when a man gave his daughter away, he gave a sum of money or some kind of a possessions accompanied the daughter. But instead of Laban giving something with his daughters, he took something from his daughters. <laughs> with no, no dowry at all. We're, we're counted as strangers, and he sold us all the riches that were ours. 
So I gather with these cattle. He took them away. We've got no, in other words, we've got no reason to stay here at all. See, now often God's people are maligned and treated unjustly. And according to the flesh, there's every reason to retaliate to such treatment. And were you to explain to somebody, they say, yeah, they didn't do you right. That's for truth. That's the truth, brother or sister, so-and-so. They weren't fair with you. They lied about it, and you could really build up a case. But don't be doing that. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's a carnal perspective. Don't be siding in with it. Yeah. Amen. Think back of Jacob and Rachel and Leah. Amen. They were trusting in God because God said, now this is what God said, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Yeah. Rather give place to wrath. That is, don't let it don't let it come from you. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay. I will settle this dispute. The question is whether you believe it or not. Do you, do you believe he will or not? I will settle this. See, we got some brethren that have been treated wrong. And there's really they know there's not a lot they can do about it. But God is going to do something about it. Amen. When, we don't know, but it is. Yes. You just wait on the Lord. Yes. He'll take care of it. Trusting God involves believing He'll do what's right. Yes. Amen. When it's right. Yes. So they said to Him, whatsoever God has said, do. That cleared the way. That's the last hurdle. You, those who are experienced in the uh, kingdom of God, they can tell confirmations when they see them. Sometimes someone will say something or something will happen. It's like a confirmation. And you know, that, that's God saying, go ahead. Whatsoever he said, whatsoever he said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very careful. Whatsoever he said, yeah. you do. You can say that. You can say, well, listen, my, my advice to you is whatever God told you to do, do. Yes. Amen. So Jacob departs, rose up with all of his sons, 11 of them. And he, uh, he crossed a river we're going to deal with. <laughs> he had to cross a river. Now, when nature, all the words spoken to, was spoken to Jacob. I list them out here: words that Isaac had delivered to him, words that Jacob had delivered, uh, words God had spoken to him, words that angels spoken to him, words Rachel and Leah spoke to him. These were all words spoken to Jacob. But now, here's what has to happen: the words they have to get into your into your mind. And influence the way you think. Yes, amen. Yeah. That's right. This has got to happen. Uh -huh. It doesn't. It can't stop at the ear gate. It's got to drop down. Yes. Get into your mind, and your mind feeds your mm -hmm. feeds your heart. In our times, we're living in a period of time when thought is less productive. This is not a thought productive period of time. As a general rule, professing Christians are very weak in the area of thought yeah. and thinking. You'll notice that you ever reason with people. You know, you try and reason with them about the things of God. You think, well, I, I, these people don't understand what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. they, that's because their religion doesn't encourage thinking, yeah. proper thinking. Proper thinking. The fruit of a distorted emphasis is a not, see, the message that's being preached is skewed, mm -hmm. so the results are riddled with moral failures and the ignorance of God. It's because they don't have, they've not been given the building material for thinking. Uh -huh. Amen. God's word is the building blocks for thinking Amen. and his various promises. Amen. <coughs> 
And Jacob, baby, he rose up. I say he rose up. Set his sons and wives on camels. Now, you know, all the modern versions eliminate the words rose up. It's not included. NIV, Basic Bible, in it's Good News, New International Bible, New Jerusalem Bible, New Living Bible, Jewish Bible, Living Bible, Contemporary English Version, English Revised Version, Good News Bible, Message Bible, they all eliminate, and he rose up. I don't know why, because the word's there. The Hebrew, the Hebrew word is there. And the word means to rise, stand up, to be established, be confirmed, to carry out, to give effect. It means he got up, he got up to fulfill the word of the Lord. That's the idea. He rose up to do what he was supposed to do. Now there are several things that separate growing Christians from stagnant ones. At the root of the difference, we find faith. But one of the key factors is the, in the area of response. Some believers are just plain too slow to respond. It takes them too long to catch on. And I know an abundance of excuses can be offered for this, and I'm, we're not here to condemn anybody. We're just here to say, get that, whatever makes you retarded in your response to God, get it out of your life. Amen. What it is doesn't make any difference what it is. Amen. Maybe something you think you really need, really bad. But you don't need it that bad. Didn't Paul say the things that were gained to me, I counted loss? Didn't he say that? Have you done that? Have you done that? Things that were gained to you, you counted loss, you could obtain the knowledge of Christ. He wrote, that's what he rose up to do. He rose up to carry out this word you get from God. You see this in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They responded, got up, and did what they were told to do right away. All through Scripture, this... Um, this trait is there. When Saul of Tarsus was called, he got up. Uh -huh. Peter and Andrew were called, he got up. James and John were called, he got up. Matthias was called, he got up. <laughs> they, all, they all rose up, went to the doing of it. And there were some people didn't do that. Yeah. Yes, Brother Jason. I remember Jacob's going back to where Esau is. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he doesn't know at this point. What's going to happen? So that's right. Yeah. Most of the time, when most of the time when people don't get up, it's because they they perceive they're going to lose something. Yeah. There's, some, there's, there's something I'm going to lose, or there's some danger here, mm -hmm. and they're not willing to do that. So this is yeah. this is a this is a real act of faith and courage because Esau <coughs> is back there. That's so, right. Uh -huh. And as you say, he doesn't know what he's going to confront. 20 years ago, Esau was very hostile. Yeah. <laughs> now, we have some examples of people that did not respond to God. Mm -hmm. There's Jonah. Yeah. He promptly got in a boat and went the other way. Yeah. But now, God uh, has a way of making you choose the right thing. Yeah. So he sends him down to the bottom of the sea. Yeah. Seaweed's wrapped around his head, and uh, he could see a little clearer uh -huh. under those conditions. Yeah. and. And he said, Salvation is of the Lord. And the fish come up to the top, and he went on his way Amen. to Nineveh. King Saul, see, he was told to destroy the Amalekites, but he didn't, yeah. uh -huh. he didn't carry it out. It cost him his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Solomon, he married heathen women, made provisions for idolatry, uh -huh. and God wrested the kingdom from him, but he, for David's sake, he didn't do it till Solomon died. Yeah. So there are some examples of people that didn't respond to what God said. So they're both are in the scripture. Mm -hmm. But these people are never held out as examples of justification. Uh -huh. No one's ever said to pursue the course these men pursued. Yes. It's like a warning. Mm -hmm. See, well, they got straightened out. That's not the point. Mm -hmm. That's right. The point isn't that any of them got straightened out. That's not the point. The point is they didn't respond immediately. That's the point. And being as you don't know how long time will be, or how long you're going to be here, yes. you cannot afford yeah. to delay. Amen. That's the truth of the matter. Yes. 
Now, the early modern church does a lot to justify unacceptable behavior. They'll say, yeah, but the Corinthians were bad, but he called them brethren, remember? Yeah. And he said they were in Christ, remember? Yeah. Well, I'm not sure this is actually an accurate assessment. I think when Paul spoke to those in Christ and those that were sanctified, that is precisely who he was talking to. Yes, that's right. Amen. Now, whether the people hearing it were in that category or not, that's something else. Yeah. But I can't believe that Paul would have called that fornicator sanctified. Right. You'll search the scripture in vain for an example of immoral or spiritually unacceptable state being People in there say being comforted by the Lord. It's not there. They're called to get out of that state. In fact, we're told, don't you know that the unrighteous are not going to inherit the kingdom? Don't you know that? We can say that today. There's a lot of people that are living like they don't know this. Don't you know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Amen. They that do such things, don't you know that they do such things, shall not inherit the kingdom of God? See, the, he's we're very plain about this. In other words, affiliation with Christ is not to be taken for granted. Amen. Just because a person says, I'm a Christian, I love God, blah, blah. Well, so we hope that's the case. But we really have to have a little more evidence than that. Uh -huh. And so does God. He that committeth sin, John says, is of the devil. Well, that helps you to make kind of make the distinction. He that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. You say, well, are you saying that? Don't forget about saying that is he saying. Make up your mind to understand what he said. And it doesn't sound like he's saying you can sin a little bit. Yeah, that's right. You say, are you saying that we're all perfect? Or not what we're saying. We're saying, whosoever's, whatever's born of God, whatever God has begotten, does not sin. Yeah, amen. Period. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Because you've got something else in you yeah. that Adam began. Uh -huh. So spiritual retardation or slow response, not, not picking up on what the Lord wants mm -hmm. easily, is lethal. Yeah, but yes. This is surely as that which is born of God can't sin. That which is born of Adam can't do anything but sin. So that's why it has <laughs> that's to right. be crucified. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, Jacob uh, carried all of his goods, which he'd gotten. I say all the goods which he'd gotten. You say, well, how many goods did he get? Well, you get kind of a rough idea about how much he got by, the, by a little token gift he gave to, he offered to Esau. A little, little token gift. It consisted of 200 she-goats, 20 he-goats, 200 ewes, 20 rams, 30 milk camels, 30 camel colts, 40 kine, 10 bulls, 20 she-asses, and 10 foals. That's 580 animals. So that give you a little idea, you know, about kind of flocky head. And he left uh, Haran to go to his father in the land of Canaan. He didn't go to return to Rebecca. He turned to return to his father, the land of Canaan, because God had directed him to return to his kin. Laban and his family was not Isaac's kin; it was Rebecca's kin. He was to return to his kin, to the messianic lineage, so to speak. Now, this, of course, is a picture of our pilgrimage here in Jacob. He went to a foreign country, 
obtained a wife, then he obtained possessions that were transportable to, mm -hmm. yeah. to Canaan. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's exactly what we're doing. Yeah. We're living in the world. Yeah. We're not laying up treasures here. We're laying up treasures in heaven. We're yeah. storing up things that will transport yes. to the promised land. So we're, we're doing the same things yeah. as Jacob, Amen. Jacob did. Well, we've also been told about what's going to happen, where we're going to go. Like Jacob told the wives, we've been told this we've is been we're told. going. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a joy when you consider it that um everything that you've ever labored in in the kingdom and labored in order to understand and comprehend and and you dug it out and it's like gems, but but see you're laying them all up. You may come to to a to point in time in this world where you've forgotten them, so to speak. Your body can't retain yeah. them. But you laid them up. They're there. That's right. And 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 since you labored in them, since you you were you were a partaker of them, and, and you have like a, you have like a an ownership of that, in in a sense, because you labored for it. Now you're going to get it on the other side. Amen. You're going to move in to this inheritance, and of course, it's going to be it's going to be eternal. Yeah, you, our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. It's an old story told about a very wealthy. Christian who had a slave servant and they both died and uh, as they were in the glory they were taking a tour and an angel walked by this tremendous uh, mansion and the man's wealthy said well, this must be my place he says no <laughs> this is uh, this is your servant's place here they went down and they found a small, very small, he said, this is your place. Mm -hmm. And the man said, why? He said, well, your servant sent more materials ahead. <laughs> well, it's a kind of a clumsy picture, but that's sort of what it's like. Amen. Now about this time, Laban goes out to shear his sheep. <clears throat> At this point, he's going to find out about the spotted, speckled, and rain streak, because I imagine their wool wasn't as valuable as the pure, pure white or pure black wool. So he went out to uh, shear his sheep, and uh, while he was gone, Rachel stole his images, <laughs> idols. They were his father's, his her father's. Several, several versions use the word teraphim which is a transliteration of the word used here. It means idols or images, false gods. Now there's a lot of ideas about why Rachel did this. <laughs> I, I list them here. Some of them is because she was trying to take away the gods so Laban wouldn't worship it anymore. And various ideas. But from what's written here and what follows Rachel surely wasn't, surely wasn't thinking about Laban when she did this. Because later, after they're at Bethel, Laban confronts his household and he says, Put away the strange gods that are among you. And be clean. And change your garments. And let's arise and go up to Bethel. I'll make there an altar of God who answered me in the day of my distress. Let's get... Get those clothes off you've been wearing while you had those idols. Get changed the raiment. Get those idols out of here. So that's telling me that it, this was not a uh, in consideration of Laban that she did this. Now, whatever whatever you may think about Rachel's actions, it's got to be remembered that she was in relative ignorance compared to us, yeah. and that when you're spiritually ignorant, you do. Strange things. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. So Laban finds out the images are gone and that mm -hmm. Jacob has stole away unawares. Some say he, Jacob, deceived mm -hmm. Laban, but I like the word he just, he just left without telling him. Yeah, that's right. And he set his face toward Gilead. As an interesting word said here. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river. Like, what river is that? 
That happens to be the Euphrates River. Not like a creek. I don't know how he passed over it. Somebody, maybe it was selling it. At his deepest point, it's about 33 feet deep, and it's 400 yards wide at the widest, so I don't know if this is a narrow part or what, but it's a river. Mm-hmm. And to get to the promised land, he had to cross over this river with his wives, with his children, with all his flocks. It was, uh, doesn't say how he did it, but Jacob had to think that thing out. And he had to be, he'd, he'd do it hastily. You couldn't like do it in slow stages. You had to get this job mm-hmm. done. He had to do this. He had to, he had to cross the river Euphrates. That's one of the first things he confronted. He had to traverse a desert terrain. He had to move his flocks at a steady pace. He had to keep his wives and 11 children nourished and safe. He had to keep his flocks fed and watered, keep the animals on which they traveled fed and watered, and be protected from the perils of robbers. This was not a journey on nice highways and city streets. <laughs> it wasn't that kind of journey. And when it says Jacob fled, it means he left suddenly and with haste. And believers there are also said to have fled to Jesus for refuge. How anxious a person is to get to Jesus tells you how aware they are of their state. If they say, well, maybe sometime, maybe next year, maybe next week, see, they're not aware of their state. Yes, amen. We fled to him for refuge. Christian left really, really quickly. That's right. <laughs> and he ran out. <laughs> now, it was, it was told Laban that Jacob had left. On the third day, it was three days' journey between the flocks, so I don't know if that's why it was three days or why it was three days which gave Jacob a little has God given him time to make some headway Mm -hmm. Laban was not coming with flocks (laughs) see you think he can make the trip more quickly Mm -hmm. took him uh, seven days to catch up with Jacob If the distance is 300 miles, as some conjecture, that means about 45 miles a day. Now, camels without burdens, they can move they can move right along at a pretty good pace, I understand. But the difference was that Laban was moving his herds, uh, Jacob was moving his herds, and Laban was not. Mm-hmm. Laban was traveling light. But God was with Jacob, he wasn't with Laban. A God comes to Laban in a dream to Laban the Syrian. I like he says that several times in Scripture. Uh-huh. Not Laban the Israelite, Laban the Syrian. God came to him in a dream, said, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. Now, what does that mean? Well, let me share with what the various versions say. I'll give you. 15 or so, do not do anything good or bad. All right, here's how contemporaneous Bible says, don't speak hastily either for good or bad. Do a Bible says, don't say anything harshly against Jacob. Geneva Bible says, say only what's good. Septuagint says, not to speak evil things. New American Bible, do not say anything to Jacob. New Living Bible, leave Jacob alone. Jewish Bible, do not, attempt anything, do not attempt anything good or bad. Young's literal translation, take heed not to speak from good unto evil. Living Bible, do not give Jacob your blessing or curse him. Brenton, do not speak evil things at any time. Contemporary English version, do not say a word, do not, even, not, do not make a threat or a promise. International Standard Version, be careful of every word you say to Jacob. Be careful... What you do to Jacob with a good or bad message Bible. Do not speak from good to bad to Jacob. Speak peaceably, then violently. Amplified Bible. So there you have uh, 15 different clarifications of the text. The word delivered is important because it says take heed. 
Now the word speak either, good or bad, the word translated either means from good to bad. Now this is what I think he was saying was don't greet him with a hug and then stab him in the back. Don't come and say, hey, well, blessed to the Lord, and, so forth, and, and then speak harshly with him. Or have you learned there are people that do this? Oh, yes. yeah. They start out good, uh, end up bad. Yeah. Don't you do that. It's obvious if you weren't to proceed from good to evil, you weren't to say something evil. Mm -hmm. Don't be threatening him. If the intention is not to get to the point where evil words are spoken, it's clear that evil words should not be spoken at any time. So what a warning, huh? Don't speak. Don't speak to Laban, uh, to Jacob like this. Now there are several instances where God communicated with wicked and uncovenanted people. Cain's one, Bimelech's one, Laban's one, Pharaoh's one, Balaam's another, the, a Midianite, that Gideon heard of his dream is one, Nebuchadnezzar is another, Belshazzar and Pilate's wife. So there's a wicked people with whom God communicated. So here's Laban, not the paragon of virtue, but God tells him, you be careful how you speak to Jacob. Amen. I think a lot of people have been told that by God, didn't pay attention to it. Yeah. So then Laban overtakes Jacob, and they're both in Mount, Mer, Mount of Gilead. And the stage is now set for the confrontation of these two men, which is what we're going to take up next, uh, uh, next lesson. But you see how carefully God protected Jacob? Yes, yeah. Brother Jason? I think I can see in, in Laban a little, a little picture of... Uh, of the world and its attitude yeah. towards religion. Amen. Yeah. The, the world really is hostile to God. Yes. And and mm -hmm. therefore it's hostile to believers. The world really isn't neutral. That's mm -hmm. right. It's Amen. not. If the if the world could mm -hmm. tell it us. would probably it would probably kill every child of God. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And this has happened at times. Oh, yes. For whatever reason God has allowed uh -huh. worldly rulers and people to, to kill his people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it, it seems that this is also a picture of God's protection because no, no child of God is going to be harmed until their ministry is done. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's it. Amen. And then when your ministry is done, like Paul said, I've fought the good fight. I kept yeah. the faith. Open season. My ministry is over now. <laughs> and then he was, he was yeah. taken out by Nero. Yeah. I don't know. So it's kind of a little picture there of the of the world and its stance towards the people of God. Amen. You should remember, so you don't you don't want to be friends with the world because they're not friends with you. Amen. Yeah. Unless, Amen. unless you're not a child of God. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Laban really didn't have a legitimate gripe with Jacob. Not really, because see, the only reason that God had blessed them him the whole time was because of Jacob. So see, if, if Technically, there was no, there wasn't any way. All the arguments that Laban could come up with, inside of himself, he knew that he had been blessed because of Jacob. He even admitted it. Yes, remember? he did. So I mean, it just, there was no reason. Now he's going to come with all these charges, but Jacob's in the in the end, Jacob's going to be cleared of all these things <coughs> before they part their ways. Yes, Amen. Yes, Sister Eddie. Um, I was considering when you were talking about how Laban, how when he, when his daughters married Jacob, how he didn't give them anything, like, normally, mm -hmm. but actually he took from them. Mm -hmm. um, I was considering a parallel with this, how when Satan, when he has his, when his children, so to speak, he doesn't give them like, give to them like the Lord does. He takes mm -hmm. from them, actually. Mm -hmm. But when the Lord, when he has his children, he gives to them. He doesn't take from them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yes, Rachel? I was thinking that um, I was thinking Speak that up, honey. God kept Jacob because um, he was 
faithful in what he did for the Lord. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Amen. Yeah. Sarah? Um, I thought of what you said that um, uh, the Lord uh, might destroy the devil, but I thought that he will destroy the devil. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jeremy? Yeah, I was uh, considering this, uh, how Laban kept on trying to manipulate things, and but it didn't matter because God was given the increase. And I was, I was thinking about, kind of like Brother Jason was talking about how the world is a, a, against God's people. And if it wasn't for God, I mean, they would just wipe, a, wipe all God's people out. But the, God's people keep on multiplying. There's going to be a, a number that no man can number. It's going to stand before the throne of God. And uh, Revelation 7, 9, it talks about that. A multitude of a, um, a number that no man can number. Yeah. Well, it doesn't look like that now, but it's not over yet. When, at the end, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to see it, but right now you can't see it, but it will be. Yeah, amen. Amen. Dallas? I liked whenever you were pointing out how Laban kept changing Jacob's wages. Mm -hmm. Laban kept changing them because he thought that it would increase his cattle mm -hmm. and his things. Mm -hmm. But God made all his cattle, all his cattle, bear the speckled and the ring streets. Yes, amen. <laughs> amen. Yes, Anna? I was thinking that when you said that um, when God calls, when God calls, we will go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 We'll have a word of prayer. I have to, I have to sit down, brother. I'm sorry. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for Jacob and for his life, for the record of him, Amen. and how many uh, parallels we see in his life. Grant us to have the strong will to do Your will that Jacob had. We believe Your promise that You're with us even to the end of the world. Yes. We're banking on that, and we thank You, Father for articulating that commitment. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.